Okay, let's get started. Hey folks, welcome to Envoycon 2024. Um, my name is Mark Turner, I work at Tetrate. I'm chair of this event, which just means I put it all together, reviewed everybody's submissions, uh, chose to talk today. I got super sick, so I'm just gonna run through this real fast. Uh, luckily, I'm not speaking today. Uh, we've got an awesome lineup of speakers um, who will be hopefully in better health than me. Uh, I'm much more interesting, <coughs> excuse me. Um, but I do need to run through some real basic stuff before I uh, completely lose my voice. Um, I just said that bit. So we have a code of conduct. Um, the goal and rule is treat each other as you would like to be treated yourself uh, with kindness and respect. There's a QR code with a link to the full wording if anybody is uh, not sure what that means. Uh, and if you have any issues, please come find me or one of the folks in the CNCF t-shirts uh, and we'll look after you. Uh, captioning and translation is going to be available. There's another QR code there that you can get, so you can get that up on your device. We don't have the, the we don't have the subtitles on the screen, but if anybody would like the uh, the captioning or the live translation, you can get it up on on your own device. Cool. Um, okay, so this is just a morning event. Uh, we finish, I think, at 12:30. Um, lunch will be. I must confess, I don't know exactly where these places are myself, uh, but lunch is gonna be um, in the south foyer. Okay, out, so this is the ballroom, outside of there in the south foyer. Um, coffee, tea, water available uh, outside at all times. We do have some scheduled breaks, um, so if I could ask speakers to keep on time so that folks have time to go out and get a coffee, that is the ideal time to, um, to go, and get a, go and get a refreshment, but they're available all the time. I don't think it's on here, but the bathrooms from this room, you just go out, you turn left, you turn left again. Um, there's signs, they're super obvious. There is a, you've all got co-located event tickets if you're in here. So there's a drinks reception tonight that is in, again, the foyer of this hotel. So just out of here on the right where the, uh, where the lunch is gonna be. That is uh, 5.30 till seven. So it'd be great if we could uh, get everybody together, have a more informal chat, speak, talk to all the speakers today, carry on the conversation. I know we haven't done this one yet, but 2025 is, is on us. The CFP for KubeCon is already open. Uh, I don't know if the co-located event CFP is open yet, but it will be soon. So we are running, we ran EnvoyCon in Chicago, so North America last year. Obviously we're running this. There wasn't one in Paris, but we are running EnvoyCon London. I think I can say that. I think I've said it now. Um, so yeah, so we are running EnvoyCon in London as a day zero event to, to KubeCon Europe. Um, yeah, the CFP is open through December 4th. We had a, a bunch of you in here probably applied, so we had a bunch of great submissions this year. Honestly, I'm not just saying that. Um, this, is, this is only a half day event. I was only able to put uh, you know, four talks plus some lightning t talks in the slots that we have. We had so many super strong um, submissions. I would totally encourage folks to resubmit the talks. I didn't reject them because they were bad. I rejected them because there was no space. So if folks would like to submit their talks again for London, and obviously anybody who has anything new to talk about, um, we will we will do our best to get them get them heard in London. Uh, that's why we're running a Europe event because the the submissions for this one were so strong. So, thank you for everybody who did that. And um, yeah, please please submit to London. The weather will be kind of like this, so you'll be home from home. Um, during this event, we've actually got great attendance. This is awesome to see. Um, if you want to tweet about it. Blue Sky, Macedon, whatever. Just increase our visibility, just, just get the hype, just share that this is a good conversation we're having. Um, try to get the, the attendance and the, uh, the submissions even higher for London. Um, there will be videos, so this will all be recorded. There'll be videos of these um, talks going up pretty quick soon after this event, so you can send to, to colleagues and other folks who aren't able to be here. So I wanted to very, I wanted to do anybody's thunder, um, but we didn't have chance for a, a full like overview slot. So I wanted to very quickly go through some of the project updates. Um, the proxy's seen a bunch of work on it. So we've got XDX failover to a different control plane. There's been a bunch of improvements to uh, XProc. Um, I mean, you can read as well as I can, right? Like, <clears throat> you don't want to hear me coughing through this, but um, yeah, some of the ones that excite me as, an, as a consumer of Envoy through Istio, um, is some of the WASM filter improvements, but I know some of the like HTTP3 latency stuff has been like big core work in the, in the proxy that maybe most folks don't see, but it's, I was just hearing super critical to getting it deployed in places that it wasn't applicable before. So there's been some, some awesome work in the proxy. Oh, the, the Golang filter now has uh, full duplex processing, 
And there's some super exciting stuff coming down the pipeline, like the dynamic module support, which is basically like DL open for filters. So you don't have to fork the C++ code base to write like a native performance filter. Um, so if the WASM sandbox is constraining you, then that's going to be that's going to be super awesome. Uh, the gateway project um, for folks who maybe aren't even familiar with it is going from strength to strength. They actually just released 1.2 uh, last week, so it's now got a much more flexible API for specifying its, its back ends. This allows it to be used uh, in a whole load more places. It was kind of service mesh specific now, but uh, before, but it can be used in a whole bunch more places now. Um, Kubernetes and non-Kubernetes environments. There's an experimental build that runs outside of Kube. Um, the extension stuff got much more flexible and it's going to start reflecting dynamic modules when they come in. You can reorder filters, uh, the order in which they're applied to certain routes. Uh, this is actually super useful for folks building like edge ingress. You maybe want to do load shedding or security filtering first and then get on to body transformation and stuff that you know, doesn't really apply in a trusted environment maybe so much, but it's, it's been a big customer request for, for stuff at the edge. Um, Session stickiness is super useful. IP6 dual stack support is, is uh, again, enabled us to get into a whole load of clusters that we couldn't get into before. Um, yeah, and a, a whole load more stuff. Oh, and you can now do Auth Z based on claims in Jots, which again sounds simple, wasn't there before. Um, enables a whole bunch of real world use cases. There's the AI gateway project. So this how you may have seen a new repo turn up in the, um, in the Envoy organization. Matt Klein's still pressing, pressing buttons occasionally. Um, so this is being worked on at the moment um, by some folks from Bloomberg and Tetrate. Uh, it's basically about making Envoy Gateway and the Envoy Proxy able to handle LLM traffic, which is like a kind of a big deal um, at the moment, but it turns out the requirements are a little different. So you, you don't want a rate limit usually on HTTP request, you know, round trip, you want a rate limit on uh, literally the number of tokens in the request and in the response because that correlates with compute power, basically, compute usage. Um, uh, there's also different Auth-Z requirements. Um, there's, a, there's an API unifier, so basically um, request rewrite um, to let Envoy Gateway, uh, AI Gateway, make different LLM providers look like the same one, so I'd speak the same, um, speak the same API. So you can use AI Gateway as a front to a whole bunch of different LLM providers, maybe one SaaS and one on-prem that are, that are running different stacks. Um, so these, yeah, this, this project is just kicking off, but there, there's already these sort of three features that have been really requested. Uh, and those folks are, <coughs> excuse me, uh, had, I guess, their first community meeting uh, on the 7th. So anybody who's interested in uh, proxying AI requests should, uh, should definitely go check out that project. Um, and then mobile, which maybe doesn't get a lot of coverage. I wasn't able to put a mobile talk on the on the schedule today, but mobile's had a bunch of really, really interesting work as well. Um, I know some of the folks down the front at Google are involved in that. So if uh, you've got any questions about that, you maybe want to look at adopting that in your own apps. Uh, come talk to those folks. Um, but the uh, like the binary size, the latency are now comparable to uh, Chrome's networking library, right? Which is what a lot of uh, applications were using. Um, up to this point, so that's like that's a super important milestone. Um, things now work properly on iOS, which I'm told wasn't wasn't too easy. Um, so yeah, there's a, there's a bunch of like maybe not so visible but really important stuff that's been brought over the line for for the mobile project as well. So that's that's still going from strength to strength. So I just wanted to cover all of that because as I say, I wasn't able to get everything on the schedule today, but we do have some awesome talks. Um, that's all I'm going to say. I'm going to sit down and cough on my own in my corner. Um, your first talk straight into it is from uh, Boateng at Google, who is going to talk about making Envoy resilient to sudden uh, changes in load. So thanks, everyone. Have a great day, and welcome, Boateng.